Welcome to FRC Media News for Thursday, May 12th. I'm Don Amata. On this week's show, we update you on details of a shooting and stabbing massacre that claimed the lives of three people in Taunton earlier this week. We also get a school committee member's views on the progress in connection with the hiring of a new school superintendent. And on the lighter side, we give you details on the ongoing Quickishan River cleanup project. But first, let's start the program off by reviewing the headlines of the week with Will Richmond, digital news editor at the Herald News. Welcome, Will. It's good to talk to you. Hi, Donna. How are you doing? I'm good. I, I know you're used to seeing Keith, but here you have me today. Now, the first story in everybody's minds is the Taunton Mall shootings and, and stabbings. Why don't you give us the details on your end of what your reporters learned? Uh, sure, it's been, um, you know, a whirlwind of events related to this, but, and there still seems to be a lot of unanswered questions at this point, but it appears that uh, Arthur DeRosa, the assailant in this situation, uh, he received a phone call um, on Tuesday night while at his daughter's soccer practice in Taunton, and that seemed to have uh, set him off. But the content of that call or who it's from is not a, not quite known at this time. Uh, he then went on the rampage, got, made his way into the home, the Myrick Street home in Taunton, and then proceeded uh, after stabbing two women there, one of them fatally, moved on to the Taunton Mall, crashed his car into the Macy's there, and proceeded to assault another five people, uh, including one person who was fatally stabbed inside the Bertucci's restaurant prior to the roast of himself being fatally shot by an off-duty Plymouth County Sheriff's uh, deputy. It happened relatively quickly with the, you were at the news conference that I was at at the Fall River District Courthouse with the district attorney talking about the suspect's mental state and he was saying that well you know i don't know about you will do you think he was hedging a little bit about those issues well he certainly you know i think the district attorney wanted to make it clear yesterday that uh at that point of the press conference it had only been about 16 hours since the incident had occurred the investigation was still fluid and ongoing and you know they were still collecting information related to this situation but I believe the district attorney was hedging out mm -hmm. of an abundance of caution at this point because it, it, there just had not been enough time passed to make sure everything had been checked and reviewed, uh, you know, as of yesterday afternoon. Well, the suspect, DeRosa, did go to Morton Hospital with suicidal thoughts. That was reported on Monday night, and he was, uh, quote-unquote, evaluated and then released. That was a concern for a lot of people. The DA... I think personally he hedged a little bit on that as, oh, yeah, he was let go. Should he have been because of his past history? And he said he wasn't in the system for the criminal system, at least for six years. And yeah, I mean, yes, it is an ongoing investigation, but there were still some questions that I believe were left unanswered. Like you said, it's still early on in the investigation. So people are still being interviewed as we speak. Um, and I'm sure there will be more coming out. As you know, Will, you've covered these stories before. Very tragic. The man who was killed was a teacher, I understand, correct? Yes, he was a teacher at the Vocational Technical School in New Bedford uh, and a Taunton resident. And I also know that this was in his first time uh, being a hero, quote unquote. I read an article actually in the Herald News that he tackled some young person who stole somebody's cell phone in Providence. I believe that was a few months back and got the cell phone back and his wife was saying, yes, that's just the kind of guy he was. So. Again, a sad, tragic slew of events. Will Richmond and FRC Media News, of course, will, be have more, will have more details as they become available. So let's move on, Will, to the feisty city council meeting on Tuesday. I know lots was going on that, that night. Uh, and the information came out you know, slowly through your paper, obviously, and, and social media. Why don't you just give us the little hot topics of that night? Well, there was a lot of back and forth, especially related to the uh, the sanitation issues in the city, though not much was ultimately accomplished, um, it seems there are counselors who have their concerns about the numbers that Mayor Correa's administration has presented related to privatization. They're concerned about whether or not this is a savings for the city, especially considering the cost associated with the bonding remaining on the trucks that would be sold to the 
the trash hole or easy disposal that has been selected by the city to handle privatization. So it, there just seems to be quite the, the debate between the administration, a group of city councilors, and uh, kind of stand, and a little bit of a standstill right now with all of them. Well, there's a little feistiness, too, with Richard Cabaceres. He was really pushing for those numbers. I think some people got upset with that. True? False? Uh, you mean upset with the idea of him pushing for the yeah, numbers? Yeah, he was pushing or for that. He the, yeah. them? Both, um, both oh, actually. Think, yeah, I think, you know, there's, there's the divisions going on right now. Uh, there are those who are in support of the administration and those who are not. So it depends on which side uh, you stand that you kind of, your, your sort of concern falls on. But, yeah, there are some people who think, uh, who, who find Richard and some council members may be grandstanding. There are others who are questioning if the mayor's office is being as transparent as they possibly could be with this process. Well, I believe that the mayor does believe he is being transparent. But again, it's it's a huge issue facing facing the city, and we'll just have to see what happens. Of course, um, budget negotiations for the school department and the city's budget is still in the works. So we'll have to just see what the future brings um, with that. And lastly, ABC Disposal in New Bedford, correct, is, is going into bankruptcy or is filing for bankruptcy? Chapter 11? They are, they are filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Um, the... Uh, the operators of ABC Disposal, however, are saying it will not have an effect on services, that this is just a matter of, you know, getting their financial house in order. So, you know, even as the use of private private mm -hmm. companies to pick up trash, even at the homes in Fall River, has increased since the uh, rollout of the purple bags and pay-as-you-throw and the trash fee, um, Users of ABC should continue to see their service continue at this point, at least according to the company. Right, and so we, we're not sure yet if it will affect any of the business here in Fall River. Right. Yeah, so, but I, I did again read that this morning. Anything else or what's coming up for next week? Uh, this Sunday, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the Flint neighborhood. Uh, they have actually taken their own steps to begin marketing uh, the neighborhood and, and through the Neighborhood Association and the merchants out there in an effort to kind of put their own spotlight on uh, what sometimes feels like a, a forgotten part of Fall River. So we'll be taking a look at the efforts of the, the Flint people this weekend. Oh, very good. And they've been very active. So that will keep us updated on that for next week then. All right. Okay. And, and you'll get Keith back next week. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. All right. You have a good weekend. You Donna. too. You too, Will. We'll have more FRC news right after this. Here are some positions on the newest hot job list for the week of May 9th through May 15th. Certified Nurse Assistant, job number 7289411. Cook, job number 7295889. Bank Teller, job number 7308859. Outpatient Clinician, job number 7289635. Resident Care Aid, job number 7295934. Consumer Insight and Strategy Manager, job number 7300816. For more information, visit frcmedianews.org or call the Fall River Career Center at 508 730 5,000. The Taunton man who stabbed multiple victims, killing two before being shot and killed by an off-duty law enforcement official at the Silver City Galleria Mall, remains under investigation. At a news conference with Bristol County District Attorney Thomas Quinn III, held at the Second District Courthouse in Fall River on May 11th, one question weighing heavily on the minds of reporters was whether security personnel at the mall acted promptly as the tragedy unfolded. I would just say that you're dealing with a unique set of circumstances that you all can understand. Can you comprehend what this man did? Drove into the mall, into the doors of Macy's, somehow got out of the car, assaulted three women within seconds or minutes, runs down the street, runs into Bertucci's. I mean, people are looking at different things, so there's no indication that people were uh, acting uh, 
not acting appropriately there, but keep in mind this is 16 hours old. I'm trying to provide some information, but this investigation will continue. But uh, the facts, uh, the ir what appears to be the ir irrational nature of this behavior speaks for itself. So what do you guys know about him having received a phone call while he was at the soccer field and that somehow set him off? indication he received one. I'm not sure if that set him off at this point. We're again continuing to investigate that. So Who is it from? Who is it from? With regard to the, with regard to the, the soccer game, could you think specifically as to anything happened that may have triggered this? That's being investigated. Again, this just happened 16 hours ago or thereabouts. My understanding is he was watching a, one of his children uh, participate in practice and left and this series of events happened with his uh, uh, irrational, violent, violent uh, behavior. Was this waitress, she was the boy at Bertucci, was she pregnant? Can you confirm that? I cannot confirm. With is this his own knife that he used? Apart from jail time, he did disclose that he had irrational behavior while he was in jail. Was that part of the Did the court ever consider ordering a mental health evaluation after any of the dangerousness hearings? And if so, why or why not? The matters are being reviewed. Uh, that's unclear at that point. As I said, we're going back over six years with respect to some of those matters. Um, so I think that's unclear at this point to tie uh, his record to these series of events. Uh, there are many people that behave in a dysfunctional criminal way who would not act like this. So what has transpired since then, it's unclear because from our perspective, he has not been in the criminal justice system since early 2000. Quinn was also asked why the suspect, Arthur DeRosa, was not held for a psychiatric evaluation at Morton Hospital when he sought medical assistance for suicidal thoughts Monday night, and especially because of his criminal background history. So there's no activity in the criminal justice system for over six years. Uh, the investigation is ongoing. I don't know what he's been up to lately in terms of non-criminal behavior, but I outlined uh, the comments of his family. So uh, I don't know if I would say it's a pattern of behavior. Again, this conduct is beyond comprehension. So I think his record, uh, or what he was accused of or did, uh, does not appear to be connected to this rampage. FRCmedianews.org can be checked for more information on this continuing story as it becomes available. In an effort to gain more insight on how individual schools are being run and whom, if anyone, should be let go from their position because of school department budget cuts for the new fiscal year, school committee members have been visiting various city schools to gain a first-hand understanding of what goes on there on a daily basis. The purpose? to determine what additional cuts could be made in the proposed fiscal year 2017 school department budget if the need arises. One such school committee member who was out and about was Gabe Andrade. The FREA had uh, wanted to, uh, to ask for people to, uh, to shadow teachers for, for a day just to see what, uh, what happened in the classroom. And uh, I did that at the, at the Green School. The teacher that uh, I was with had, uh, I believe it was 29 students. There may have been one student absent, so she had 28 that day, and uh, she never stopped. And uh, how she got done, what she got done, I, don't, I really don't know. Uh, and I can, I can imagine that, uh, that uh, despite uh, her hard work, in fact, in fact she stated it, there, were, there, were, uh, there was one reading group that, uh, that probably she, that she didn't get to that day, and she was a little bit con concerned about that. But imagine adding, adding another four or five students to that class. It's almost virtually impossible. Yeah. Yes. Now, what about cutting programs such as art or gym, music? I, uh, what about that? Not, not in total. Uh, if if uh, the, the idea of wiping, wiping those uh, out, uh, I think, is bad. Um, uh, as it is right now with the, uh, the environment in, in education, that the, the high stakes testing, uh, it, it's education is not as fun maybe as it used to be. Now, granted, uh, we all know that there's a, there's a certain amount of drudgery that uh, that you have to go through in uh, in education, in the learning process. But any time you can make it interesting and engaging for the students, you actually get more out of them. 
so if, if you take something, uh, out, something like art and music out, you're making it less engaging, less interesting, uh, number one. Number two, art and music actually help you, uh, like music in, in particular, uh, help you with, with math, for instance. So, you know, studies have shown that. Uh, so, so for every reason, um, it, it, it's not a good idea to, to wipe it out. And I understand that is a proposed budget, and that's really not on the table. We're just obviously discussing. You know, uh, co correct. As a matter of fact, we have a, a hearing on, on the public hearing on the budget on the 23rd, so people can come in and, uh, and weigh in on it. Uh, can changes still be made at that point? Yes, yes, they can, uh, and uh, there may be because there, there's some rumblings that uh, that uh, we didn't cut enough. So, um, so that if, for, for different reasons, uh, what what you see now may not be the final. In other school department news, the search to hire a new school superintendent continues with time fast running out. Current school superintendent Meg Mayo Brown is slated to leave her job June 30th and it is the hope of the school administration to have a replacement by the end of the fiscal year on June 30th. Andre spoke about the search process to date and what he hopes to see in a qualified finalist. The, the obvious uh, things, you want a good educational leader, a good manager, uh, you, um, you want someone who, uh, who, who's familiar with budgets. Um, the, uh, we have a new, uh, we may have a new high school being built, possibly, uh, at least it's in the, in the talking stage at, at this uh, point. Uh, so uh, someone who's had some experience with, uh, with the building maybe uh, uh, th that, that might be uh, a, a good thing to have. Uh, you want someone who communicates well uh, and uh, who, um, who, is, uh, who has a certain humanitarian streak, you know, who's, uh, who, who can listen to people uh, and, uh, and deal with them uh, in a, in a, uh, a professional and, uh, and uh, caring way. Um, and, um, How about a PhD? I, do you, do you think somebody should have that PhD? Because I know Meg did not. It, it's it's preferable, but I, I wouldn't say it has to be because you, you can get some someone uh, who, who's pretty good who, who does not have the PhD. Obviously, it, lo it, it looks better. In addition, school committee man Paul Coogan also has his views about what qualifications he would like to see in a top candidate. Are you looking for somebody with a PhD, I mean, is that one of the criteria that the school committee is looking for, or is it somebody with background? Would you consider someone who may have served as an assistant principal or an assistant superintendent and say, yes, they can do this job now? Well, again, I, I'm not on the search committee, although I did attend the meeting the other night. I, I don't think we're hung up on a doctorate. I don't think we'll get caught up again with that paying them until they have a doctorate. I think what we'll do is keep that out of the table, I mean, off the table. if. They come back and say, I just received my doctorate from Boston College in Northeastern. Then we can sit down and hopefully work with them. Uh, but it, that's not going to be the, the, the make or break part of the thing to me. I want to see people that, um, that are committed to the students in Fall River and want to work in this district. That's, that's my overriding concern. And again, wants to be a part right from the get-go. It seems to be getting a little bit late. It is May. Meg's stepping down, obviously, at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, when do you hope to see well, somebody in place? The, the uh, deadline for applications close um, May 10th. Uh, we have some in already. Um, I had lunch yesterday with the gentleman who's spearheading uh, the effort, Glenn Kucher, from the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, and we were kicking around some of the things you're saying right here. Um, I know the committee is very <laughs> is very diligent and fast moving. Um, Meg's leaving the end of June. If we don't have someone in place by the end of June, we may have to do something as a bridge to when that person gets here um, because they have to give their district notice too and we're not going to ask people to do that. But I think, I don't think we're going to be off by a lot. A few weeks, a month maybe, I'm hoping because again, we. We're moving this along quickly. We had, they had their first meeting the night. They've already got scheduled other meetings, and uh, they have a deadline and a, and a timeline they're already working on. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. So this is Riley. She's about 11 months old. Uh, she is super excitable, super puppy. 
Um, she loves to play, loves to do whatever the heck this is. <laughs> Uh, she does need uh, some basic training, uh, but all around she's, she's just uh, your typical puppy. So this is Tumbleweed. He's a two-year-old domestic short hair. He likes to relax. He's a little timid, but he lets you pet him. He's very sweet. He kind of just likes to relax. He just needs a little TLC and some attention. The nonprofit agency Mass for Motion has begun a cleanup campaign of the Quickishan River in an effort to beautify the city and to get ready for the grand opening of a two and a half mile bike path in that area. Mass in Motion was founded to help encourage and support Fall River residents to live healthy and active lives. FRC Media News met up with Active Living Coordinator Janice Velazzo at Britland Park this week, where volunteers have been recently signing up to assist with the cleanup effort along the river's shoreline. Who decided to do the Quickishan cleanup and why? Mass in Motion. Um, is, which is a project with the Department of Public Health. Um, the Julianne Qu Kelly wanted to do the, the cleanup. So we organized the cleanup um, f before the opening of the rail trail, which will be this summer. Now the trash you're talking about, is it hazardous waste at all, do you know? There is some hazardous waste in there. Um, you know, we have a protocol if people find things like hypodermic needles in the trash um, along the shore. So um, yes, we do have protocols for that. Um, but mostly it's plastic, lots and lots of plastic bottles and bottle caps. and So just regular debris, so to speak. A lot of just plain old debris. According to Velazzo, Mass in Motion is also slated to open a bike path in that area sometime in June. We'll have more information on that story as it unfolds. Now let's talk employment opportunities for area residents. The Fall River Career Center at 446 North Main Street in Fall River has held several workshops to help job seekers with resume development and dress for success tips. All this in an effort to get them prepared to attend the City of Fall River's semi-annual job fair to be held May 18th at Government Center. The event is sponsored by the City of Fall River, the Career Center, the Chamber of Commerce and the Office of Economic Development. Tony Rigo, Grant Service Specialist with the Career Center, explains the purpose. What they do is they're going to come in. Obviously, there's going to be, uh, again, as I said, it's over 78 companies. They're going to be there. Obviously, they're going to be outlining their positions. And what we do, the advantage of, again, of a very important a job fair, you come in and you're going to actually meet with someone there, with the HR, uh, the HR person. You're going to be interviewing right on the spot. Again, it's very important, I tell everybody, research the companies. One of the advantages of us doing the workshops here, you will know exactly what type of companies are coming in, what kind of positions that they have. That's, very, that's most important. Be prepared, see what companies, see what the positions are, research. And again, it's how often you have an opportunity to today to just meet with the company. Obviously, it's been harder to, because obviously you're doing job, you're doing applications online. And the advantage, again, is you're going to be meeting most likely each person for every company that's there. And you're talking about various positions. And it is personality that will sell. That's correct. Obviously, just be prepared. Come in. Again, look at the workshops. Let us help you. The advantages, we're going to tell you. We're going to dress for success, critique, critique your resume, anything to do. Let us prepare you to make sure that when you go there and you're ready to meet with companies. Because obviously people will be nervous anyway and they should expect that. They should expect to be nervous. It's, it's intimidating. You're looking at a lot of companies. Obviously pick and choose exactly what your background is. Look at exactly what each individual person should know exactly what they're looking for. Again, let us help you. Let us tell you exactly who's coming in. Be prepared. Rico also says that people who would like to attend the job fair do not have to be concerned with transportation issues. May 18th at Government Center is the job fair that Fall River uh, Career Center and among others the sponsors. Tell us about the logistics of it. What's very important too, we have to d discuss obviously parking. What we're going to do in conjunction with the Battleship Cove, you can park down there. Or we're going to have trolleys 
during the day of the job fair, traveling between the Battleship Cove, Fall River Career Center, and Government Center. So again, what anyone should do is park by the Battleship Cove. Trolleys will be available. They're going to be running all morning during the job fair from the Battleship Cove to the Fall River Career Center and to the Government Center. Again, the job fair at Government Center will be held between 9 a.m. and noon with veterans the focus for the first hour. That's it for this edition of FRC Media News. You can catch FRC Media News Thursday and Friday at 6 p.m., but our online news site is available 24-7 at frcmedianews.org. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Donna Mata. Keith Chibo will be back next week. Have a good one.